Hello, guys. Thanks so much for having me. Personally, the TED and the TEDx platforms have always been a huge source of in inspiration for me. So it's honestly really humbling for me to actually be here. So thanks so much once again for having me. Um, so I guess I'm here to chat a little bit about the stuff that we chat about in Indian sport every four years. Every time the Olympics comes around, me as a sports fan, I'm sure you, many of you as sports fans, probably ask yourselves, why are we not better at sports than we are? A country, and, and I hear this all the time, even internationally, you guys have 1.3 billion people. How can we not have better athletes? And I think there's so many different solutions to this, but, but I have a pretty simple solution. Every organization needs to or wants to attain long-term success. Every sporting organization wants to attain long-term success. So let's just write that over here. So every single sporting organization wants to attain long-term success. And for me, in order to attain long-term success, an organization needs to have two key ingredients. And those two key ingredients, for me, are culture and structure. So let's, let's get started with this, because obviously I need to have some sort of you know, proof to what I'm saying. So, so guys, let's, let's just look at the biggest sporting organizations in the world. So right off the top of your head, a lot of you follow sport. What do you think are the biggest sporting organizations in the world? FIFA, FIFA some of the biggest football clubs. OK, all right, fine, fair enough, guys. Manchester United is, all right? So Manchester United is the biggest club in the world. So does Manchester United have a culture to it? Yes? All right, fair enough. I think so too. And does Manchester United have a structure to it? All right? They have, a be they have one of the best youth programs out there. So that's Manchester United. They have culture. They have structure. Now you guys tell me, as sports fans, does Manchester United have long-term success? Yeah? I think that's a pretty simple... Pretty simple answer. Now let's bring this a little closer to home. What is the most popular sport in India? All right. So let's look at cricket, Indian cricket. All right, guys. So does Indian cricket have a culture? Yep. Every single kid out there wants to play cricket. Everybody wants to play for the Indian team. So the Indian team has obviously built an amazing culture. Now, personally, I think that the BCC High has done an amazing job at structuring cricket in India. Agreed? So does the Indian cricket have structure? Yes. So in my opinion, for us to have long-term success, it's, it's a very high probability that Indian cricket is going to have long-term success. Now let's bring this even a little bit more down. What is the most, where in India is sport the most popular? What region? What one region? Yeah. Northeast? Yeah, you guys are looking at me, you say Northeast, it makes sense, <laughs> right? Northeastern sports. All right, so does Northeast have a culture of sports? OK, now we're getting a lot of tick marks. But I think I'm from the Northeast, so I'll tell you, I don't think the Northeast has a structure, correct? Fair enough. So they don't have a structure. So their long-term success is always going to be in question. We're never going to know. We might have a Baichung Bhutia here and there. We might have a Mary Com, But it will never be long-term. It will never be structured. And, and, and last but not least, and this is because I'm so close to this. Let's talk about Indian tennis, right? So Indian tennis. Now, Indian tennis, in my opinion, used to have a culture. We had some of the greats. My city in Chennai, with Ramanathan Krishnan, Ramesh Krishnan, the Amrit Rajas. These guys made two Davis Cup finals. That's no joke. But somewhere along the last 20 years, I feel like we've lost that culture. So we don't have any more culture. I can assure you that we don't have any structure. So for us, there is just no way we are going to have any kind of long-term success. Now, guys, just to talk you through a little bit more about this, 
I'm going to give you examples of my life and how structure changed my life. So in, in 2004, for the first time in my life, I'd gone abroad for training, for an education to the University of Virginia on a tennis scholarship. Now, what did that really mean? What does that mean? And I didn't really understand it, to be honest. I wasn't really sure about the NCAA system. So what it was, up on the screen you can see, is every single one of those things, whether it's grades, education, fitness, coaching, nutrition, every single one of those aspects in my life was taken care of by an expert in every single one of those departments. Now that was the first time in my life that I had actually experienced what structure really was. Because when you look back, let's look at the education system in India. What happens to athletes between the ages of 18 and 22? That's where we lose out all our athletes. What happens? Unfortunately, every single one of them has to manage every single one of those things alone. And that's just not viable. Now the, now the crazy thing to think about over here is that wasn't special for me. That wasn't specially designed only for me. Every single guy on my team had that. Every single athlete at the university, which is over 600 athletes, they had that. And to think about it on a broader scale, 500 schools, there's over 500 NCAA schools that have that structure for their athletes, where every single aspect of their lives is taken care of by an expert. And that meant, for the first time in my life, when I was 19 years old, for the first time in my life, I was allowed to just go out and play. I didn't have to worry about anything. And being a part of this kind of structure, when I went to the university, I was a very lowly ranked junior. I wasn't that good. Even in India, I wasn't that good. After I went there was a time that I not only got my academic skills together, I got all academic honors for my school. I got a sportsmanship award for my school because the nonsense that I did on court wasn't acceptable by the coaches. And I went to three out of four NCAA finals as a singles player, finishing the year as number one. Now, if you look at it from an organizational perspective, the University of Virginia, when the, our head coach was brought in, we were not even ranked. By the time I was there, which is about four or five years later, we were ranked number one. And that was in 2006. And now, four of the last five years, the University of Virginia has won the national championships. And that is all because of that amazing structure that every single student athlete has to experience once he's there. So that is my story of structure and how structure has actually helped me become successful. So let's talk a little bit more about the second, the second concept. What is culture? So once again, guys, I was at the university. And it was a, it was a weekend. So the coaches had given us the weekend off, Friday night. But I still really wanted to practice. I was really excited about this new thing that I had learned. So I called my roommate up and I said, dude, let's go out and let's hit some tennis balls. And he's like, first of all, it's Friday night. There's a lot of other things that students want to do on Friday night, <laughs> other than go hit tennis balls. And it was 11.30 at night. He said, man, what are we going to I said, dude, let's just go to the courts and see. So off we went. We get to the courts. And we have 13 public courts, public university, public courts, open at all times. 13 courts at 11.30 at night on a Friday. And I had to wait, because every single one of those courts was full. And that was the first time in my life that I had experienced being around people who wanted to be around a tennis court so much. I had to wait, no problem. But I was so happy that I was around a culture that wanted to play that, that wanted to play the sport. And when I looked back, this has happened to me, guys. This has happened to me. When I was a junior, this has happened to me when I was growing up. This has happened to me when I was number one in the country and winning medals for India. When I go to a court, sometimes I get kicked off because a senior official wants to play. And the other courts that are all available are all under a lock and key, and none of us can actually access them. And I hope I'm painting a clear picture for you guys as to what culture is over here and what culture is over here.
And for us to succeed in long term, we need to actually start building that sporting culture. So I guess the next logical question is, where does this culture stem from? And for me, the answer is pretty simple. The culture, this kind of culture stems from passion. For us to grow this culture, we need really, really passionate people working for us. So I'm going to share a really short story about my old coach, Scott McCain. Scott McCain was a great coach. And one day, we had an incredibly long flight, horrible journey, somehow landed up in Korea. And in Korea, it was you know, 1 or 2 PM. And we didn't want to go practice that day. But Scott was like, hey, guys, you got to go out. You got to practice. It's the right thing to do. Just 30 minutes on the court. So we said, OK. So we all get out there. We practice. 30 minutes is done. We're stretching. We can't wait to get out. And on the other court, there's a little seven or eight-year-old Korean girl hitting tennis balls with her dad. Now, Scott, now keep in mind, this is a 55-year-old guy who's had 16 knee surgeries, 16. So he's probably feeling absolutely horrible after that long flight. Now, Scott gets up, goes over to that girl for no reason, and he starts teaching her the fundamentals of tennis. For 30 minutes, he sat there. Now, keep in mind, my coach, he doesn't speak Korean. The Korean girl doesn't speak English. And he's gone out there with zero obligation, but he's seen a girl that he thinks that he can help. And he's gone out there and he's helped her. And for me, you cannot have culture without that kind of passion. So that's what we actually need. And that's where passion stems from. It was because of this passion, and it was because of this structure and the culture that I was put into after the age of 19 that I became successful. It was because of this that I became the, the, the highest ranked Indian tennis player in two decades. It's because of that that I won three gold medals in 2010. And you can congratulate me, but you have to thank my coaches who actually gave me all of these opportunities and structured my life and put me in the right environment to actually succeed. Because that is what is necessary. Now, I guess the next question, guys, is how do you actually implement these things? How do you actually implement cultures and structures into a society? So I run a nonprofit called Life is a Ball. Now, what Life is a Ball does is we actually reach out to many kids from economically disadvantaged areas, small rural areas in different cities, different areas. And we actually take sports programs to them, because we think that sports can play a positive impact. Sports can have a positive impact on their lives. We can, learn, we can teach them things like leadership. We can teach them things like dedication, how to deal with wins and losses, nervousness before exams. We can teach them how to be hardworking. And more importantly, we can teach them what ethics are, what's right and what's wrong. Because you learn these things in sport in a very, very practical way. So that's what we wanted to do. So that's what we do, and that's why we do it. But another way to look at why we do it, and I was in the States last month talking to a few friends. And they, they were asking me about life as a ball. And I said, I was telling him all of this. And they said, no, so why do you have to actually go and do this? Don't, you're telling me that there are playgrounds, there are schools. There are kids, and there's no structured play for them? What do you mean? So this concept was so foreign to somebody who already takes it for granted in their society. So Australia, America, the UK, all of these countries, all of this is the norm. But in India, it's not. Just think about it, guys. If we're running behind in the syllabus in class, what's the first subject that gets taken away? The PT class. Right? <laughs> you guys are laughing now. Wait till your PD class is taken away. <laughs> but, and I guess the next question is, why, why, why sport? We can, we can do so many other things. Right? And, and the way I look at this is, is very simple. Imagine 15 years ago, all of us were around. 15 years ago is when I grew up. So we were so engrossed. We were spending so much time on learning things like Fox, learning things like uh, Cobra, MS-DOS, things that are 15 years later are obsolete. So we don't know. We can't predict what the job market's going to be 
15 years from now, as 15 years ago, we didn't know what it was today. However, 15 years ago, things like leadership, things like hard work, things like dedication, having the right ethics, those things were always valuable then. And those things are valuable now, and those things will always be of value. We can teach our kids in a very, very practical way. And we can help improve their health. So, and the kids have fun, so why would we not want to inculcate this in our culture? So at the end of the day, for me, for us to have what we want, we want long-term success in Indian sport. For us to actually have long-term success in Indian sport, we need to start working from the grassroots level. We need to start implementing culture. So we, we encourage our kids to actually go out and play because there is a value to it. We need to start telling them about the culture. We need to start inculcating the structure in our grassroots level. And once we do that, as an organization of Indian sport, Indian sport will get better. Because sport, it always has been, it still is, and sport always will be a game changer. Let's go out there and let our guys play. Thanks so much, guys.